Hi, this is Karen O'Brien and we're going to be talking about domain modification. So let's start this presentation real quick. Um, so, and then let me just swap it. Okay, so we're going to use QGIS to modify a domain and extract a project from another project essentially, or build a project from a previous project. Um, but I want to start with just some information about the Flow2D plugin. So you may need us to um, modify the plugin to get this to work on your project, kind of depending on how complex the project gets. Some of these steps may change. So if you find that you need to do some of this work and it's not working for you, just let us know. We'll show you how to learn. You're going to learn how to download the plugin today and how to request modifications. So we'll show you that when we get there. Okay. Um, so for the project overview, I was given this project um, from a county agency and I don't have any information about this project, um, but I wanted to use it to sort of build or to sort of update and modify a new construction right here. But all of the elevation data that I was given from the modification and the LIDAR data that I was able to obtain offline was really different than the LIDAR data that or the data that was interpolated into this um, project. So I know, I know that there are two ages of LIDAR data for this project area. So I'm wondering if one of them is in like a different vertical datum or I'm not really sure why they're so completely different, but it it made it to where it would be really hard for me to modify the grid elevation where the project is going to be added to rerun the whole thing. So instead I decided to break out a micro model and just model the project area. So for that we need a new domain and we need to transfer some data and eliminate some unused data. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, so what we'll do when we're ready is to load the required data, create or load the new domain and then make a backup. So that way, if we make a mistake, you know, we can go back and finish um, or, or, or get that data back and try again. Backups, when you're doing this kind of uh, experimental, it's not really an experimental process, but it's it changes and it's different for every project you do. So it's kind of critical to make backups if you're new to it. Um, now, um, so once we get everything sort of ready to go, then we need to eliminate data. So we're going to build this new grid and eliminate the data from the old grid. So we'll be um, exporting the original grid so that we have it. We don't need to export ARF centroids. I found a better method for this, but we do need to delete the ARFs that are outside the new domain and the cross sections that are outside the new domain and the culverts that are outside the domain. And you guessed it, make a backup. Um, modify the comp domain. So then we will change the um, size or basically change the shape of the computational domain and rebuild the grid, sample the elevation, sample the roughness, schematize the structures, schematize the floodplain cross sections and make a backup. Um, this we're going to learn a little bit about uh, spatial and table joins. Um, so we're going to use the ARF points within individual grid elements to rebuild the grid element um, grid element numbers in our ARFs and our infiltration table we're going to do a uh, spatial joint or maybe just a table joint do a table joint to our original grid and then we're going to use that to calculate the um, we'll just run the SCS calculator again on that that's the easiest way to do it um, so we don't need some of these layers because I've kind of simplified some of these methods. Um, again, we don't need this complex centroid join because I simplified this method. So we'll just skip this one. And then we'll export and do a run just to make sure that everything works. If everything works correctly, then all the tests pass. And then we'll add inflow and a boundary. Um, and then another video will be to, you know, update those design alternatives. Okay, let's go ahead and get out of here and minimize this and let's go uh, over these files. All right, so this is the full project. Let me open that. I'm going to pause the video until that's open. Okay, so I loaded the original project and so I built this original project so that I could see that there's like quite a few things that we don't really need for our project because our project is area is down here. So we don't need any of the features that are outside our project area. We don't need this 
extensive and complex boundary, and we don't need these inflow nodes that are nowhere near our project area, or this levee. So let's take a look at the data files, both the imported, or sorry, the full project and the required data, and let's see the differences in what we don't need. So let's start with eliminating the data that we don't need. So we'll start with just coming to the, from the list doing top down. CAD points, we don't need CAD points.dat. That's something that the Flow Pro engine creates, and you don't need it to work with QGIS. Same with fplane.dat, we don't need it. Um, same exact process, the Flow Pro engine creates these two older files and you don't need them for QGIS. Uh, we won't need inflow.dat because we don't need those two inflow nodes that were up in the corner. And we don't need outflow.dat because we don't need this complex boundary. But everything else we, oh, and we don't need levy.dat because there was just one little levy up by our inflow nodes. So we don't need these three, um, um, or sorry, I guess these aren't three files. These are one, two, three, four, five files. So this is that whittled down project. Um, now we took our levies out, so we need to modify the cont.dat by setting this switch to zero. So this is channels, streets, levies, and if you can't remember that, it's in the data input manual, and you need to set that to zero. Um, fpxsec.dat, there is a floodplain cross section right here that we don't need. It happens to be floodplain cross section number one. Um, I know that because when I cycle through my cross sections, it comes up as number one. So I can open the dat file uh, like this. You can see that, let me show you how I did. Okay, so we'll just copy, paste to reset it. And we open the dat file and I just take out that first cross section. Now, it might be easier to just take them out of the dat file but it's also really easy to just eliminate them with the cross-section editor, the floodplain cross-section editor. It's also really easy to just delete them with the editor. Okay, so that's no big deal. Um, but you do want to keep this original because we want to remember their position because floodplain cross-section number one has a, you know, matching hydrograph that passes it. We need that. Hydraulic, let's see, let's see, what was it? That was it. Okay, so now let's go over these dat files to look and identify the data that's, you know, just some interesting things about this data that's going to make it easy or difficult to um, port to a new project. So arf.dat, pretty nice that all these are just T lines. That means totally blocked. It didn't model any other arfs. It doesn't really matter for us, but I mean, it's nicer to look at. So this is just, these are just T lines for totally blocked built cells representing buildings. Um, we just need to eliminate a bunch of them and renumber them because their grid element numbers will have changed. Cont.dat won't change other than what we already did with our levy switch. FPXSec.dat won't change. No, I'm sorry. FPXSec.dat needs all new grid element numbers, but that's easy fix. Um, Highstruct.dat needs to eliminate a bunch of structures and update grid element numbers. Everything else should stay the same. Infill.dat needs to Im update all grid element numbers and eliminate all of the um, stuff that will be outside the new grid. Manning's n.dat will be automatically um, modifying it, but what we'll do is we will take the new Manning's n from the old grid. We're going to export the old grid and get it that way. Rain.dat, sorry. Rain.dat won't change because it doesn't have any spatial data. Taller.dat won't change. Topo.dat will change, but hopefully has the same alignment. That would that that's what we are going for. All right, so I am going to shut this down and open a new QGIS. I'll pause until it's ready. And I won't say I'll pause from now on. If it pauses, you just know that it's waiting for something to calculate. Now we need a new project. So new flow 2D project and create. And I'm just going to call it that, but then I'm going to delete that because I just want to replace it. And I'll click Save, Replace, and go to here. And it's now building our domain. I'll pause. Okay, now we just click OK. And I know that I said that we were building our domain, the last thing I said, but really what I meant was 
we're building a blank geo package and now we're going to import the dat files from our required data into um, this project and I will now pause the video until that's complete. So once the data is finished importing, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to assign these. Just click no, you don't need those, so just click no, and then click OK. And now if you're in the latest version of the plugin, it's I think it's uh, Flow2D Gila version 1.0.2, it's going to automate this schematize for you, and it's going to schematize the comp domain, floodplain cross sections, and hydraulic structures. I'm going to pause till it's done. Okay, that is complete. And we now have a computational domain and um, user layers for hydraulic structures and user layers for floodplain cross sections. Uh, I think we're done with this for now. Let's take a quick look at the PowerPoint and see where that puts us. Okay, so we were down here to load project and make it, and then we need to load the domain and make our first backup. All right, no problem. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, Let's grab our backup, or no, sorry, uh, I just need to go up one layer, and let's grab our new domain, and we'll pop it down here, and let's just make it, uh, let's just clear the fill. So I'm just clearing the fill, because we don't need to see that. So now we just need to eliminate anything outside of this, but I think we want to do our backup first. So I'm going to go ahead and work through the first backup. And then I will not show you another backup. All right, so we close the project out. We save it, close it, zip it. Okay, and here's our first zip. Add to, yeah, that's it. And then we reload QGIS because it takes about the same amount of time to load QGIS as it does to zip it. And this will be called um, backup one. Okay, and then I can usually just move that up here into my backup folder. Okay, and then we just want to reload our project. I'll pause till it's ready. Okay, now now then this time it's going to ask, do we want to load the model? Click yes. I'll pause again. Okay, that didn't take very long. Now we don't need to look at the grid. Um, and now we can start eliminating the stuff that we don't need. So let's start by opening let's see uh, hang on a second okay so what we need to do is to eliminate everything inside the r4 flare that is outside our new domain so the easiest way to do that is to use a local selection tool or a location selection tool and if you can't see this then you'll need to go to the toolbox and selection by location select by location you'll have to put more words in obviously and then once you use that it'll also come up over here so we'll click this one rforf within uh, new domain new domain then we click run and close now it's actually got the wrong one selected so we'll invert the selection and again that's right here and then we will edit, delete, save, turn off the edit. That's as fast as you can do that. That's, that's as, like, as simple as it gets. Now, hydraulic structures are going to do the same thing, okay? Um, hydraulic structures, we got them here and we have them here. We actually need, because uh, I don't know why, but you have to do it in both layers. So let's do select by location and within a new domain no nope, n new domain and run and then h for hydraulic structures and same run now they're both selected in both layers all right so we come here invert the selection edit delete and then we save okay then we come here invert the selection, edit, delete, and then we save. Okay, and those are done. So let me close that. I think that's everything we needed to do. Let's see what the instructions say. So, 
Okay, it says, oh, no, we need to export the original grids. We don't need to do this. I actually found a better way to do this. We did this, we did this, and we did this. So we need to export the original grid. Okay, so that's this guy. Um, hang on a second. Right click, export, save features as. Uh, let's go ahead and put this to original grid. We'll just overwrite that one from the previous recording. Just trying to get a better recording. One, two, and we're unchecking the stuff that we don't need just to simplify this data. Because we don't need all those fields. And click OK, overwrite, and that's going to add that to the grid. I'm going to pause till it's finished. OK, that is finished. I'm going to, um, we don't need to see that right now, and I'll move it down there. And I think what the key is to, to do a backup at this time. So let's save, and uh, again, I'm going to leave everything over here because I don't want this to be part of the geo package yet. Um, and then I'll go ahead and do a backup. Okay, so let's, the next thing to do will be... Um, let's see. Oh, we gotta go to the PowerPoint presentation because I always forget what's next. Okay, so modify the comp domain, replace, rebuild the grid, sample elevation, sample roughness, schematize structures. All right, let's put this over here so I can see it, so I don't forget those things. Okay, so comp domain, uh, select, delete, and then we'll just select this and copy and paste. And we can do the cell size. I mean, you could also just leave that as an external domain and just put the cell size in here, but it's kind of the exact same amount of time either way, so I didn't really bother with it. The only key is that it exactly matches the boundary and it's perfectly aligned to the grid because when I built it, I used the snapping tools. That's the key to that. Um, let's undo or let's unselect all and create the grid. Yes, overwrite the grid. I don't think it takes very long to do this. We'll just wait for it. Okay, next is elevation. Um, so we need our elevation layer, E. And for some reason, I don't know if it's because this elevation data doesn't have the um, EPSG code assigned to it. It has the WKT only or something. I don't know. It doesn't like the this warping tool. Let's see. I wanted to set that to Hillshade. So if you hover over this, you can see that it, see it doesn't have an EPSG code. But it does have, if you right click it, it does have a coordinate system. So I think I maybe just need to like export it and set the coordinate system. That would probably fix that. But either way, it does not work. So if you try to run the regular sampling tool, it doesn't work. But I think if I just exported it and save as and, and then like um, assigned the coordinate system to it, it'd be fine. See, 26,000, it don't have any elevation. It didn't get warped. So let's just quickly use the external mode. And this stays on comp domain. And this will go to centroids within the comp domain. This goes to statistics from raster. And so what this will do is it will take every grid element whose centroid falls within the computational domain will be assessed for an elevation correction. It will be given a mean from the raster layer and it will use the statistics of the pixels inside the cell. I, so it's not like a it's not like a warp, which is a weighted average. This is just a classic average. It's a like maybe not as quite as good, but honestly, it's a ten foot grid size. So I mean, it's it's good resolution anyway. So it doesn't really matter. All right. Um, now let's see. Then it was sample elevation. Then sample roughness. So that's this guy. And our roughness is, oops, I always forget. I have to turn that back on. Let's get that here so we don't have to see so many of those. Our roughness is in the old grid, n value, centroid point sample, and I'll pause until that's done. 
Okay, we have a new grid element, or sorry, excuse me, a new end value. And I think we're done with that again. And um, so now we have a new grid with a new elevation. You can see it here. And we need to update that number, so we just use this tool right here. And as you can see, that number is updated. And we also have a new end value, or our end value is now, um, I think, yeah, there we go. It, on the road, it's 0 0.02, and everywhere else it's 0 0.04. So I'm, this end, it's not like um, highly spatially variable end values. Okay, next is to schematize the structures. That's this guy. Just hit schematize. And this one is schematize the floodplain cross sections. Now, if you go to like add a structure, because I think we're going to add a structure in here on the design model. The next time you go to schematize, you might want to be careful. I think you'll be okay, but sometimes when you build a new structure and then you overwrite data, sometimes it deletes some of your data. So you do need to be careful. But I think in this case, because we just deleted everything and got rid of a bunch of stuff, we're not like, we're not doing that. Um, we're not adding that. So I don't know. We're not going to worry about that. Let's just keep going. Okay, so we're finished with these. Um, we are finished with these. Now, the next step will be to renumber the grid element number. So if you look here, this is the grid ID that matches the original grid. What we need is the, we need the grid ID to match the new grid. So what we need to do is a spatial join between the R4 layer and the new grid. And that is pretty simple. We just come and look for a tool called spatial join and we'll join attributes like location. We want the R, these are actual points, not even though they don't look like it, they're actual points that are within the new grid. Okay. And we want to only need the FID. Uh, no, we don't want to run it yet. And the joined field prefix, we'll call it J underscore and run. Okay. I think it's running it right now. Now, keep in mind that that's a scratch layer. So it makes our ta our next step is to create a table join and it makes some kind of funny things happen because that's a scratch layer. So let's go, this time we'll do a table join. So now we need to join this data to this data to get the new grid element number because as you can see right here, this is the new grid element number. This is the old grid element number, right? So let's do this. Let's double click, go to joins, add the join. This goes to J for joined layer. That's a scratch layer, meaning it's not part of the permanent memory. Um, this goes to grid FID and this goes to grid FID because those are the two columns of data that match between the two data sets. So this is coming from joined layer and this is coming from um, our target field, which is our fourth. We only want this. We don't want and we don't want this big old huge long guy, it's annoying, so let's just call this new grid element underscore and all right now I might we might see something. Okay, let's open the attribute table and let's hit edit and let's change this to grid FID and we'll change this to new JFID, new join FID, and click update all. And I think because that's a scratch layer that it like, for some reason it copy um, paste instead of, or cut paste instead of copy paste. I'm not really sure why that ends up null, but it's not important because you're going to eliminate that join anyway as soon as you're finished. So this is done. So you just save it and you come right back over here and you just delete the join because joins slow everything down. So you don't want joined joins happening in your tables, especially if you have a large project. And we're also finished with this one. So let's just 
um, let's just remove it and now those are finished the next one is infiltrations and the first time I did this I had this kind of con convoluted and finagling way of doing all this and I've since found a much simpler solution where we use um, we make a join between the old grid which I, yeah well I don't think it matters if we turn them on but we can turn them on but it's not gonna matter and the infiltration and the old infiltration data so here's what we want to do again another join another spatial join so join attribute lie location and actually no I lied this is a table join okay uh, but we need well, we don't actually need to show you the table, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So if you open the Flow2D settings, you can go to your advanced layers and then let's close these two. And you see here we have infiltration tables and what we have is SCS. So let's just look at this data. So you can see here that it has, this is just a row number and this is a grid ID, FID. So that's your grid element number and that's your curve number. So we need to join that to the new grid element number. But we're going to do it slightly opposite of the way that we've been doing it. Um, so in this case, we are going to build our join, a table join right here. And so we start the join and we want to join it to cells SCS. Okay. We want to join grid FID to FID. That Remember, that's a grid layer. So FID is the grid element number and we want to join our curve number only and that's fine for our custom prefix that's fine and we click OK and now you have a couple of choices you can do that thing where you select by location where they are within the um, wait sorry this is old grid where they are within the um, new domain and click run and close and then we can make sure that those the correct ones are selected and then invert the selection so let's invert the selection and then we go you can edit and you can delete and that will really <laughs> speed up the data processing and that goes let's see that goes save and now what we'll do I'm gonna pause until that's done saving okay it was done um, now what we need to do is use our infiltration calculator to let's see we'll use original grid SCS and click OK and now that will calculate our curve number data much faster than um, you know having it be it, it saves you the, t the amount it takes less time to delete those grid elements than it does to calculate that grid and that's basically done so we're finished with that let's check our notes so we're down on the next page. I changed this, modified this complex method to something much simpler. And so the next thing to do is to run your test run. So that will be quick run. And hang on a second. I want to actually make sure that we delete our quick run and delete our boundary run and we will select our quick run and just let that get started and once that's started okay now we need to add um, the rest of our water so we have rainfall and infill inflow hydrographs so and you can see that there is some rain so I'm thinking we might want to do like a like a spatial arf right here 
and because I want to replace this floodplain cross section with four inflow nodes, but then I don't want this rain to collect and run this way. Um, so I'm going to, so that's going to be maybe putting a rain arf um, above this area because this rain's already been accounted for with those inflow hydrographs across that original floodplain cross section. Then I would also want to put in inflow nodes for this floodplain cross section right here. But again, that's like a lot of rain collecting and filling this. So I'm kind of wondering if uh, I can maybe just pull in the inflow from here and let that take care of that. And, let, and then the rest of this is just rain collecting from this area and going this way. Let's check the original project data and see what it looks like. So this is the original run. Let's model the um, velocity vectors. That should be good enough. I'm going to pause until that's done. Okay, so this is the original, um, I, I would say the original velocity vectors from the original project but I deleted everything outside of the domain just so that it, it loads faster and it's less data. And so what we want to do is maybe like go back to the original model and put a floodplain cross section like, let's see, we want, I'm thinking like eliminating all the rainfall from like this area and this area by using a rain arf equal to, um, a rain arf equal to zero so that this gets zero rainfall and this gets the normal amount of rainfall. And then we do, we convert this floodplain cross section from the original into hydro, into inflow hydrographs. I'm going to use four of them. And then we put inflow hydrographs right here to represent this water right here. That's my thought. And then we can take, it looks to me, like we can take a discharge value from like right here and like maybe a floodplain cross, I think there might even already be a floodplain cross section right there. I don't know. Let me see. Let's move these bad boys to like the bottom. Oh, bummer. Well, there's not, but there's, there's discharge through these guys. And we can maybe put that discharge like right here to account for that. And then, and then that way we would get, let's see, no, actually we got a lot of, no, this would be fine because this is the flow from our rainfall. So that would be accounted for from like right here and all this would be still get rainfall. Everything would still be good. And then if we put in like the discharge from collective discharge from these guys, like right here, then that would fill these guys up. It'd be like maybe a little bit of a delay. So we maybe want to put them like right here. And I'm highly suspicious of this. I don't know if that actually is happening or not. It doesn't seem valid to me, but whatever. They may just not have these modeled correctly. Like they may not be picking them up. So we'll do an elevation correction here, an elevation correction here, inflow nodes here, or he, actually let's put them right close to here. Inflow nodes here, inflow nodes here, like right here, and inflow nodes here. And that will be our existing model. So I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to, I want to close this video down. So that'll be in the next video.